what the crap did I just watch? Amulet is an atmospheric and surreal horror that just might be genius. But at any rate, it raises a ton of questions, some of which I'm going to attempt to answer right now. Obviously, this is going to contain a ton of spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to find out spoilers, you can watch my spoiler-free review. I've linked it up in the corner here and in the description below. As always, I don't assume that I have every single answer. I mean, I'm going based off of what I've seen and what I've deducted and just putting the pieces together to come up with my thoughts and theories. But I also want to know yours. I want to learn from you when you've seen the movie and and then we can go back and forth and learn from each other. So share those in the comments below. I love reading them and I love finding out different things, especially things that I missed or that I got wrong. And, and it's nice to also hear if I got something right too. All right, so let's dive in. These are my thoughts and questions regarding Amulet. The Amulet and its place in the woods. And how did Tomas come to find it? So if you remember, the scene cuts to Tomas out in the middle of the forest, just kind of digging in a spot. I mean, there was no real rhyme or reason for it. And at the beginning, I'm scratching my head like, really, this is how you're going to set up that he is finding the amulet? That's kind of cheap. But I think more so, it's that the amulet is drawing Tomas to it. I mean, he has the capacity for pure evil, which we learn later on in the film. And I mean, that's even confirmed further by Imelda Staunton when she says that. I mean, it's not actually shown that that is what is drawing Tomas there, that it's the amulet doing that. But I think it makes sense, especially when we see Magda in her true form in the shell towards the end. Is Imelda Staunton the devil? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, the whole idea of the amulet is that it does predate any formal religions or beliefs. But really, there's not even anything to to prove or to suggest that Imelda Staunton is supernatural or immortal. I mean, she's definitely devious. She certainly manipulates Tomas into the direction that she's trying to go. And she certainly has a plan and she knows what's going on because she consults her book and she's going through it. And well, who do you want? as your companion. So she's definitely in the know. She's been around for a while, but I can't really justify saying that, well, she is a supernatural being and she's been living forever because we're just not shown that. Who's the actual bad guy in this film? I mean, we're shown and we're told that Magda's mom, who is locked up in the attic, who actually turns out to be a guy, is the devil. Well, he's not really the devil. He's a demon and he is giving birth to those nasty bat baby things, and that's just gross and wrong all the way around. Thankfully, they only leave it up to our imagination as to where the babies exit. I don't really want to know, and I'm so glad they didn't show us. But we're told, or we're led to believe, that that is the incarnation of pure evil, and that that then transfers to Tomas. Or maybe Imelda Staunton is the true bad guy in this. I mean, she's the one pulling a lot of the strings. She knows what's going on, right? I mean, she's manipulating Tom Tomas. She's guiding them. She's setting up the companion even. But I believe that it's actually Magda who is the true bad guy, that she is the master and the one in control. So yes, Tomas is pure evil, and he is going to, for eternity, or for at least for a really long time, give birth to those same nasty bat baby things. But he's not the one who's actually in control. Imelda Staunton tells Tomas that the slave cannot outlive the master. And so we're really believing that the master is Magda's mom, the dude really, in the thing, and that he is hanging on until Magda dies, making Magda the slave of that. And so the slave cannot outlive. That's why the, the dude, the, the CG, the bad guy, is hanging on and living still. But in reality, it's the dude living up there. He's the slave and he is the one who cannot outlive Magda. He must die. And that's why Imelda Staunton tells Tomas, you need to go finish it then. You have to take care of it. Well, then yes, he is actually making sure that the slave does not outlive the master, which I kind of think is funny because I don't think the master will ever die. And we'll get to that in just a second. And further to prove the point that Magda is actually the bad guy, that she is the villain, that she is the, the one in control, that she is the master. When she goes to the gas station at the very end of the film, she brings out that nasty frozen food stuff, tosses it in the back, to Tomas, and he is now the slave. He is at her will. He is there to be just the, the giver of life to the nasty bat baby things as a penance for his continued evil. So who is Magda then? 
Well, it can be assumed that Magda has been around forever, really, or at least for a really, really, really long time. She's predating most everything because she appears to Tomas at the end in the shell in the form of the amulet. So at the very end of the film, why does Magda give Miriam the amulet? I mean, isn't there power in that? Isn't there, like, doesn't it draw evil to it? Well, there's probably more than one amulet. And this was just one of them, and that drew Tomas in. But Miriam has already seen that amulet. And so when Magda gives it to Miriam, it's more of telling her, without saying anything, that I know. That I know what Tomas did to you. I know how he violated you. I know how he hurt you. And I'm taking care of it. You are not alone. So is this always going to be the outcome for Tomas? I mean, was he just destined to become the demon, the, the giver of life to the nasty bat baby uh, penance of evil things? I'm not really sure. I mean, I'd like to think that he had the opportunity at some point to repent and confess, but he never does. I mean, every opportunity that he is given to speak about his evils, both seen and unseen, he never does. So as it stands, as he goes through, he is completely unrepentant. Now he's self-flagellating and he, he is like torturing himself on the inside because of his behaviors and he knows they're wrong, but at no point has he actually vocalized it. Has he said out loud, I did these things, I was wrong, I am just bad and I need to be forgiven. I mean, he's so much so knowing that what this is doing to him inside that he is eating himself up is that he has to tape his wrists together to keep himself from just scratching out his eyes and his face while he sleeps. I mean, those are the actions manifesting out of his extreme guilt. What's the significance of all the shells? From what we're told from the ancient beliefs, they're supposed to ward off evil. But what if they're actually the symbol of evil? I mean, think about it. When Tomas is scraping off the ceiling and he uncovers the, the symbol of the shell there, and he says it's meant to ward off evil, but he touches it and he feels kind of a shock and he also hears the noises which causes him to fall off the ladder. At that point, he has not gone full-blown demon yet. He has not succumbed to the absolute pure evil. Even though he has the capacity for it and he hasn't repented, I mean, he's well on that path, but he hasn't fully gone there. But after he has, after he has become the demon, after he is like, you can see it in his face, he's gaunt and he's choking up that black, nasty stuff. Amelda Staunton gives him a mirror in the shape of a shell and he's able to hold it with no problem. And he looks and he sees himself for truly what he is, now pure evil. And then Tomas is actually able to enter that shell thing where he sees Magda in her true form. So I like that Tomas is given the opportunity for redemption throughout the film, and he never takes it. And so what he does is he seals his own fate. He chooses the path of evil every single time, and then that just condemns himself to becoming a demon and to giving birth to the bat babies. So what do you think? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What did I miss? I would love to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Let's learn from each other and let's keep the discussion going. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.